Welcome to MonsterGardens.com. Thank you for taking a look at our video. If you would like to subscribe to our channel, we would love that. You will get updated on the newest, latest, and greatest grow gear tested for you, field tested by us, and telling you really the ins and outs of the products. We don't get paid by these guys. We just do this on the free time. But we are a retailer, so we'd love for you to support our retail store. That's what we're trying to do. Well, what, what we did in this test, we took all the major bulb manufacturers all the way across the board and did extensive testing on them. We tested them under our spectrometer, and we decided to just diagnose all the spectral distributions at the manufacturer's state, as well as what we see, and then doing it on a 25 point grid, taking the average, and then releasing the conclusions to you, the viewer. So we used a really high end lightning. This is not something to buy at a hydroponic store. Right. Um, we actually got a really high end version of a radial spectrometer too to make sure that we could test from the 300 nanometer all the way to 1100 nanometer, far outside of the chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B or the par light area, just so we can get a true depiction of any of the wasted light that's coming off these bulbs. Right. And the truth is, is that we picked the biggest brands in the industry that people question us here at Monster Gardens what the best lamp is. We tested it from 24 inches, 30 inches, and 36 inches. That's a great rendering of people that are in a warehouse garden versus guys that are in a smaller, maybe their garage or a bedroom garden. Manufacturers, without you knowing, they have cheapened the product and they know that you don't test these lights with an expensive light meter like we have. And if you use a simple PAR meter, you might not notice all these differences because it's testing visible light and not necessarily just the photosynthetically active radiation. So it's sometimes you might actually actually have a spectral adjustment on your lamp without you even knowing about it. Right. Um, just due to, let's admit that some manufacturers in the industry are just trying to make the products cheaper and still selling off the original names platform. Yeah. Um, so that was why we created this test. We wanted you to be in the know. The idea behind the average is just so that way we could grade each of these lamps. The easiest way for us to realize it is not just by throwing numbers at you, but by throwing numbers in comparison to the other ones, so that way we can easily grade them on a bar graph. Well, and this is another thing too. Let's admit this. Whenever you, you're testing the most optimal spot under the lamp for the intensity, it's not a true depiction of the lamp's intensity. Exactly. It's Obviously, we're not growing one single plant that's this big that's soaking up that light. We're growing an entire footprint of plants. And so the average, I believe, is a more proper rendering of the lamp's output than just testing a single point and giving you a single micromole number. And this has really been feedback from you guys watching these videos. And we really appreciate you guys giving us feedback because that's what we're here for. We're here for you. And it's great to have an audience that allows us to further our education and also helps us to further and support the industry as a whole with better education. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what the goal is here. Now know this. Because you see uh, exact micromole output, it's not the true story. There's a lot of different ingredients. Ingredients meaning the wavelengths of light that go into the total caloric value if you're comparing it to food. So when you're looking at a micromole or um, when you're looking at a micromole or a PAR measurement, what you're getting is a total number of the wavelengths intensity as a whole, but what you're not seeing is the actual specific wavelengths in certain nanometers, which is also the true story because some bulbs have an added spectrum of UVA or UVB, um, more wasted light or more um, energy that's maybe not best spent in indoor gardening, the greenhouse gardening, such as green light or uh, more yellow light that can stretch further for when your lights are literally 12 feet above your canopy. And so we're going to give you the power light measurement, but we're also going to show you that spectral distribution chart. Uh, we're not going to get into that in detail because there's a lot of science behind it and there's a lot of comparisons behind it. But if you want to know this information, go ahead and call us. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So before this test, Steve, which lamp did you expect to win? You know, I personally thought that Ushio or Sunmaster was going to be on top. They've been around for a long oh, wow. time. Yeah. They are known to be a really top tier bulb. And they so they make their bulbs in Europe. Yeah, I mean, I figured it was going to stack up pretty well against the other ones. I would assume that as well. Yeah. Um, but let's go ahead and see the test so we can find out who stacked up well and know this. This is, we're providing this information for you growers at home to know that there's multiple options other than what your buddies are using. Uh, it's always best for you to do your own independent research. Though we're doing it, we're trying to give you as much moving forward, please do your own research. It's always best for growers to see how equipment functions in their own environment. Mm -hmm. So the big thing to realize too is that the reflector needs to always be at the same place at the same time. If you're doing multiple tests at the same time, even though you are putting a tape measure on the height, it can still change very, very minimal. And even a minimal change is gonna throw off your micromole reading. Yeah, even an eighth of an inch. So I was trying so hard to do this as unbiased as I possibly could. So the main control was the reflector never moved. I went through every brand at 24 inches, every brand at 30, every brand at 36 inches. Just so that way I wasn't constantly going Ushio at 
24, 30, 36. Now, Digilux at 24, 30, 36. Because let's imagine he might not put the reflector in the exact same exactly. spot every time. And so it was huge that I kept the reflector at the same height always. Also, it was all done on the same day. I made sure I did them all the same day. So one height per day. And so that really made a, a very well, that also made a good control for me so that way I knew for sure that the reflector wasn't getting changed even on my off hours. Another thing to realize too is it's a completely blacked out tank. There's not going to be any reflectivity at all. It's going to skew the results. I also made sure the floor was always swept, so that way, that way there wasn't any random dust particles that could potentially refract the light certain what ways. About the ballast? ballast that I used was the Lumitech ballast, and I used the exact same one. I used a thousand watt for the thousand watt bulbs and a 600 for the 600 watt bulbs, and I made sure they were always plugged in at the same power source. And um, I actually watched you do some of this testing. He used a non-air cooled reflector, and that was huge because let's imagine this: a six inch or eight inch air cooled reflector has these giant holes of missing reflectivity. Yep. A six inch and eight inch hole on both sides. So that's also unless you're looking at the yep. ACDE. I know you smart growers out there know about the new equipment. Right. But the truth is, uh, we I saw him using a non-air cooled reflector to make True. sure that he has as much much of those photons focused down on the footprint as possible. It, that actually brings up to my next point. I also used a focused beam reflector, unlike say a wing or an extra large triple XL reflector. Um, I decided to use more of a focus beam reflector just so that way in my five by five footprint, it was throwing all the light down in that footprint. He pretty much did this test so you know down on the footprint what the intensity was true to the lamp. In this test, we decided to do a five point measurement. We basically did it on a five by five footprint, each of the four corners in the spot directly in the center. That way we could just get everybody the rough footprint that it's gonna be as well as still taking an average so we can still grade each of these bulbs. And the first lamp that you accomplished on this test was the Ushio. So at 24 inches, the Ushio looks like it had great intensity in the middle, it was 32.95. On the average of the five points, the Ushio HPS was testing at 2,528 micromoles. Uh, and I like the spectral distribution on the Ushio. What I'm noticing it is it actually has a good amount of intensity right above around the 440. Now also looking at the spectral distribution, it doesn't have uh, a lot of wasted light. It does have some of that green light. And again, that's probably for greenhouse use when you have your fixture far above your canopy. Right, it helps a lot um, with the penetration. So the second bulb we tested here, uh, Steve is Sunmaster and it looks like that tested on an average on the 5x5 five five grid, uh, 23.94. Um, now that was uh, definitely lesser than the Ushio, um, but let's talk about the spectral distribution a little bit. So as you can see by the Sunmaster spectral distribution, it has a really high output in the yellow to red spectrum. However, the ultraviolet rays are just a little bit pushed up near the 500 nanometer. It's a little higher up the distribution than the Ushio. So as you can see, the, the quality of light is a little higher in the Ushio, but the intensity is a bit higher with the Sunmaster. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, the Digilux, I think was the next one. So this one basically, it tested just slightly lower than the others. So as you can see here by the five points, they average out to be 2,470 nanometers. And also by the spectral distribution, you can see it's pretty similar to the others. However, it's still lacking a little bit in the ultraviolet spectrum. Next we have the Lumitech. So this is the Lumitech 1000 watt HPS bulb. So unfortunately, the Lumitech 1000 watt HPS did not test high compared to the other ones that we tested. However, as you can see by the distribution, that it does still have a quality spectrum. The light that it throws is it's, it's done pretty well, but the intensity really isn't quite there. So the last lamp brand that we tested is the Genesis HPS 1000 watt. Um, you can see here, based on the results, that it does test the highest amongst them all. And keep in mind, this is a completely unbiased, completely controlled test. And I mean, this thing just blows all the other ones out of the water. Um, it's still tested at the same distance. The big thing, obviously, is the average of the micromoles. 2,966.6 micromoles. That's quite high, especially amongst the others. But the and the spectral distribution, I mean, they have great amount of reds, yellows, uh, you know, obviously in the blue spectrum, you know, they have the intensity that they need, but at 2966, um, that's a great opportunity. Uh, I mean, the big thing I want to point out too is, I mean, let, let's just admit, most of the people in the hydroponic industry are growing essential oil producing plants. And that's what you need when you're, when you're trying to grow essential oils, you really want the ultraviolet rays, more specifically the UVA, UVB. And so as you can see by the spectral distribution, it is just a tad higher than all the other ones. And again, this is a PAR measurement. We're not giving a lumen measurement because lumen is visible light. PAR is what the plants are growing off of. 
And so what you're getting is a total number of the photosynthetically active radiation, the light that your plants are growing off of. Then you have a chart next here that kind of stacks them all up so we can visually see the difference. Mm -hmm. And that's where it becomes even more so dramatic. Um, you know, I love the fact that we have the opportunity to produce this information for you guys because it puts us in the know and uh, also allows you guys an opportunity to say, hey, maybe I'm gonna try out another lamp brand. Mm -hmm. So we compare, say, like a Genesis to um, a high-end price bulb, like an Ushio. That difference in savings gives you almost the opportunity, if you're actually doing your three-month bulb swap out, which you're supposed to do even with the Hortolux, uh, if you're a serious grower with a lot of lights, you can obviously see your compounding light effect difference of depreciation and know that swapping your bulbs every three months gives you a bigger and greater harvest over a given period of time, even with the lamp replacement cost. But the important thing to know is this, is that with the price difference of a Genesis versus two of maybe the normal industry leading brand, you can almost buy one more bulb per year if you're doing that every three month swap out just in your savings. Right. So the Genesis is tested at high power output, but then you have the opportunity with the same cost level per year is to have uh, a new bulb in your garden. So if you take the depreciation into respect over a given time, your Genesis is gonna come out far ahead of some of the current leading brands in the industry. So mm -hmm. that's obviously important information for those growers at home that run, or growers in commercial gardens that run their grow as a business and need to be looking at return on investments as well as performance. I and mean, these are important aspects to, to take in consideration when you're running a garden. Mm -hmm.